or influence someone. Oh, okay, just kidding, I thought. <laughs> The use of superior strength or influence to intimidate someone, typically to force him or her to do what one wants. To me, that sounds like a really sad sentence. Let me say that again. The use of superior strength or influence to intimidate someone, typically to force him or her to do what one wants. So, now think about this. That is the definition of bullying. And look at the synonyms. Persecute, oppress, tyrannize, browbeat, harass, torment, intimidate, strong arm, and dominate. So, my question is, why do the weak look so strong when the strong, most often times, are invisible? Let me break that down. Bullies are weak. They say hurtful things to wear people down. They say things to sound cool, or to impress their friends, or even to sound tough. But when you look at victims, the victims of bullying who don't become victims in the end, they are the strongest of the strong. I was looking up information for this talk, and things like different, and weird, and lonely, and worthless kept coming up next to the word victim. And I was like, okay, that kind of makes me mad, because that's not how I see it. And victims, they are the real heroes, so why can you make them sound worthless if they're not? When I think of the word victim, it sounds insufficient to me, because when I hear it, I think of a little puppy, like this little guy up here. He's cute and all, but he's kind of useless. Like, he can't do much other than bark. But when I think of victims, there's two sides. One side is Captain America. He was bullied as a child and made fun of. He was called weird and put down and maybe even beat up. And he put those emotions, well, with the help of his dark invention, into good and into helping. And now he's America's favorite soldier. So now think of a super villain. Up here, I have Bucky Barnes because I love Captain America, and he's like, fights Captain America, but he not be, might not be the best example because he was brainwashed, and I'm trying to show that some, vi some vi villains or bullies, they were weighed down, and they were bullied, so they decided, well, if I'm going to be weighed down, then I should bring a friend, and then that friend decided to bring their friend, and so on and so forth. Until one friend was like, no, I'm not gonna stand for this. I'm better than this. So my point is I can either think, see them as sad or as strong. When I think about bullies, I, I think they sound kind of lonely. And I'm, I'm, here, I'm up here today dressed up as Captain America. And there's a reason behind that. One reason is I absolutely love him. Like, if I could meet him, my life would literally be complete. I just, oh, I love him so much. And my second reason is, well, I wanted to subtly say that I've been bullied too, and you're not alone. And my third reason is, I wanted to show that heroes are much better looking than villains. No, I'm not a hero, but seriously, villains, they, or I guess bullies, they don't have any real friends because they either hang out with people who are afraid of them or people who are other bullies, and then they get bullied in turn. A recent study shows that bullying among friends can be even more dramatic because it's a betrayal of someone they trusted. So, my question is, why? Like, where is the positive side? Where is the good part? I don't know. I, I was originally going to do my talk on why bullies bully because I haven't heard about that before. I was curious about it and I wondered why they bully because not many people talk about it and let's just say I found my answer. There's no reason, so that's why no one talks about it. And that's why I'm not talking about it today. Because some bullies may bully because they were insecure or they were bullied or maybe they're in a hard time, but that doesn't make it right. That doesn't mean they should. So back to my why question. Why do they want that life? Maybe they don't. Maybe it's all they know. I couldn't tell you. It sounds so hard to me. Well, actually, that's not accurate. It doesn't sound hard to me. It is hard. So far, I've made myself sound crimeless, but I am definitely guilty as charged. I've bullied before. I've bullied because I was insecure or because I wanted to look tough or cool, but every time I bully or every time I'm mean to someone, it makes me feel bad. And I have to work a million or a billion times harder to fix friendships and make amends. And I end up wishing, wow, I wish I'd never done that because now I feel bad and I feel 
feel like less than I am. So, why do they do it? I don't know. Okay, look at this. So, we take this survey at my school, and it's called the climate survey, and here's the results from my grade. So, I want to show you a couple questions. One question is, students at GMS treat each other with respect. So, most people's eyes will go straight to this 62.73%. That is great. I'm glad that's so high, because that's like over half of people agree. And then when you look at the 15.53%, that's another great thing, because more people agree. That's like over 75%. But then sometimes people tend to forget about these two numbers down here. 16.15% of kids in my grade are rarely treated with respect every day when they come to school. And then we have this 5.59% of kids in my grade are never treated with respect. See, I wouldn't want to come to school every day and be worried that I'm going to be bullied or not treated with respect. So I wish that these numbers were up here and then these numbers were back and in, into the zero range because that sounds terrible. And, oopsies, look at this. I feel safe at Grandview. This one really sticks out to me because I, I want everyone to feel safe all the time. And, like I said, this is amazing. Over half of my grade strongly agrees that they feel safe every day when they come to school. And then 37.50% feel safe. But then, what about this 5%? What about them? 1.79% don't feel safe at all when they come to school, and they have to come here every day? Well, <laughs> that sounds terrible to me. So, I was reading some stories from the bully's point of view to try and come close to understanding why bullies bully. And <laughs> let's just say, I still don't get it. But I thought I'd share this woman's reasoning with you. She said that she didn't necessarily feel better, but she knew that they felt worse. So my question is, <laughs> I guess I have a lot of questions, but my question is, did they feel worse? And I'm sure they did at the time, but could a bully or could a victim ever be strengthened from being bullied? I know it sounds crazy, and I am in no way enhancing bullying. I mean, I'm doing this talk after all, so obviously I'm against it, but could a victim find the strength in themselves to overcome bullies and to beat them? Not physically, but mentally. To be stronger with that confidence that it brings them? Would that rule over it all? Or would those words that came out of the bully's mouth, would, they, would that bring the victim's ears forever? I don't know. And it sounds so hard to be bigger or to be stronger because that bully, they're so mean. And they sound impossible to me, but it's not. And I can help you. I have a couple tips for you. My first tip is, don't start calling yourself a victim. Like I said, victim is not a sufficient word because the minute you start calling yourself a victim, that's when you become one. And when you become one, that's when other people start believing it. And if you call yourself a victim, then you become less than you are, because you're not a victim. You're not a sweet little innocent puppy. You're, you can fight back. And so call yourself a superhero. Like mine, for instance, could be Kazam Katie or something. I know it sounds silly, but it really will help. And my second tip is be strong. Don't cave in. I know they sound so mean and big and scary, but don't cave in, because if you start believing them, then it becomes true, and it's not. You're much better than they say you are. And my third tip is, stand up to them. Say, no, who are you looking at? That's not me. You can't take me for less than I am. You don't know me, so you can't judge me. My fifth, fourth tip is, ignore them. Just ignore them. As hard as it may be, all they want to do, their main goal, is to wear you down and bring them to the new low that they are. So don't let them do that to you. Don't let them bring you down. Be happy. My fifth tip is do something you love. Leave your bully where your bully bullies you. So that sounds kind of confusing, but let's say your bully bullies you at school. Leave them at school. Don't bring them home with you because if you start bringing them home with you, then you'll never be able to enjoy anything. And if you can't enjoy anything, when will you ever have any fun? So. Maybe when you get home or when you get to school, just start having fun and go hang out with your friends or go on a trip or do something fun. And my sixth, my sixth tip is be you. Be the best you that you know how to be. So as my good friend says it best, you do you. So 3.2 million kids get bullied every year and 160,000 kids get bullied every day. Who's telling them they're great? Who's giving them compliments? I don't know. 
Because maybe they are getting compliments, but they still feel bad, and they still want to be happy. But that could be you. You could be the one that makes the light at the end of the tunnel not seem so far away. You could be the one that makes the skies blue when the rest of the world seems so gray. That could be you. You can be the bigger, better, and stronger, and more confident one. So, now it's up to you. You can take what I said and do nothing about it. And you can just say, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense, but I don't think I want to do anything about it. Or you can take what I said and go wave to that kid in the hall and make them smile. Be that one person that makes them smile when they don't think they have the strength in themselves to smile. Make them happy, because that can be you. Be your new favorite superhero, you. Thank you.